Throughout the history of shonen, we've always seen a display of two opposing forces going against each other, one good, one bad. The concept of good or bad is usually up for the audience to decide, but sometimes we come across characters that when we dive deep into their background and fully understanding their backstory and the trauma that they come from, we come to understand why they think and feel the way they do, causing us to question if the protagonist is in the right or the antagonist is in the right. Right. We've seen this type of writing with characters like Aaron Yeager versus all of his friends in the final season. We've also seen this exact same type of situation play out with Pain versus Naruto or Sasuke versus Naruto. Usually in Shonen, when we see these two forces collide against each other, either the most traumatized character of the series ends up dying in the end like Aaron or the character, the antagonist, will be given a redemption arc like Sasuke. Only options that are usually left is the protagonist prevails, the antagonist is able to redeem themselves through death or given a second chance to live life again, atoning for all their mistakes that they made at the beginning of the series. Usually the protagonist character has some type of goal they are striving for throughout the series. For Luffy, he wants to be the Pirate King. For Naruto, he wanted to be the Hokage and change the Shinobi world. But when the protagonist doesn't have an end goal, they usually turn into a self-sacrificing character that will willingly trade their life for the betterment of the future or for the sake of their friends. Self-sacrificing characters rarely get a happy ending. For examples, think about Itachi and Minato, two popular characters that sacrificed themselves to protect the Leaf Village. Now compare a self-sacrificing protagonist up with a, a traumatized antagonist that is walking down a path that is unredeemable. You're left with a recipe for disaster. Two characters with death being their only possible answer. This is now the situation in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. We are now seeing this exact situation being played out for us when it comes to Kowaki and Boruto Uzumaki. Much as the fandom doesn't want to accept the fate of these two characters, you have to come to understand we're seeing all the red flags about how their deaths are going to take place in this series. Both characters will not be alive at the end. If you look at both Kowaki and Boruto's journey throughout Boruto Next Generations up to Two Blue Vortex with that they will both die at the end of the series, this video shouldn't be that surprising. And trust me, I've been booed on Twitter for this take and I've also been booed in the comments. In one of my videos, when I kind of dived into the tragic fate of Borto Uzumaki, today I wanted to dive deeper into the situation that we have with our their antagonist and our protagonist and how the series is going to end with their deaths. I'm going to be using proof from part one Borto and the current two blue vortex to prove my point and the different symbolisms that we have seen and the different hints that we've gotten. And I'm going to finish the video explaining how Boruto and Kowaki are basically reliving Obito and Minato's life and they will have the same ending. So you know it's theory time and you know I'm about to talk a bunch of nonsense that sounds good but you know the motto just let me cook. So since we're about to dive into both the characters of Kowaki and Boruto, their symbolism, their parallels to Minato and Obito, their foreshadowed deaths and just their overall characters that lead up to their final conclusions. So we're going to start off with Kowaki. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we come across characters or antagonists that sometimes are so traumatized that even though their way of thinking is skewed, they still have a good solid point when it comes to their actions and decisions. And unfortunately, as much as I hate to admit this, Kowaki has a point and he kind of sort of is right the way he's going about eliminating the Utsusuki threat. And I know this is a hard pill for us Boruto fans to swallow. Pause. Mainly because we grew up following the journey of Naruto Uzumaki, who believed in the major themes of the Naruto franchise, which is love, bonds, and family. Watching Naruto Uzumaki endure so much trauma, but still having a positive mindset that changed the hearts 
of some of the most atrocious villains that we've ever seen in a series, it's hard for us to accept Kowaki, his adopted son, to go against everything we saw Naruto do and to save his best friend Sasuke, to change the heart of Nagato, to make Zabuza break down and cry, and making Sasuke his lost friend realized there's a reason to continue living. So it makes it hard to accept Kowaki's actions. But when you look through Kowaki's characters through the lens of all the events that led him up into him becoming a cyborg, joining the Leaf Village, fighting against Ishiki, protecting Naruto against Momoshiki, it's easy to understand Kowaki's mindset. To briefly touch on this subject, Kowaki endured so much abuse from his father that was suffering PTSD from the fourth great ninja war. Then that same father sold him off to Jigen, who continued the torment once Kowaki became the vessel Jigen was looking for. One of the things Kowaki always wanted when he was a child was a goldfish, and Jigen gave him that goldfish, but used it as a source of torment to keep Kowaki in line. So anytime Kowaki didn't want to train, didn't want to go through the pain that Jigen was forcing him to endure, Jigen would target that goldfish. This created a feeling of helplessness within the young Kowaki, shattering who he is as a person. So much abuse and so much trauma on a young child will create something hollow something broken, somebody confused and lost. That very goldfish that died that day, Kowaki made a subconscious decision to make sure that never happens again. From that point on, he really had nothing to lash on or live for. He accepted what Jigen taught him. He has a hole in his heart and the only thing that can fill that hole is the karma seal. The first time Kowaki ever felt safe was when he met Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto inspired Kowaki to become a better person, which was symbolized through Himawari's face. Kowaki built himself up piece by piece, but at the end of his journey, there was still one piece missing. When he finished fixing Himawari's vase, we saw water leaking out of one specific hole, taking us back to what Jigen taught Kowaki, that the karma seal is the only way you can fill your heart. Karma seal equals power, and power gives Kowaki the ability to manifest his dreams or his ambition. Kowaki sealed Naruto Uzumaki and his wife to protect them against the threats of the Utsutsuki. Utsutsuki clan is the root to all of Kowaki's problems. These monsters ruined his life, and all the trauma that they put him through created a brand new type of monster. Kowaki witnessed Momoshiki and Ishiki Utsutsuki almost kill the one person that he truly loved in this world. Kowaki straight up says he does not believe in the world if Lord Seventh isn't alive. This shows you how deeply connected Kowaki feels to Naruto Uzumaki. As much as we love Boruto as a character, Boruto still harbors Momoshiki within his karma seal, making Boruto a threat to the shinobi world. We know the Utsutsuki want to destroy the earth to cultivate a chakra fruit so they can upgrade their DNA, which means the end of the world. Kowaki understands this well, since he's filled that hole in that missing vase with the new karma seal constructed by Amado, Kowaki is going to use this power to kill every Utsutsuki that stands in his way. It sounds harsh, but he kind of has a point. Almost threw up admitting that. That's how deep my hatred for Kowaki runs. Let's move on to the second hint that Kowaki will die at the end of the series. This was actually shown in the anime canon arc with Himawari and Kowaki. The episode is called The Outcast, episode 209. In this episode, we learn that Hima was stealing food from the Uzumaki household to feed her new friend called Jackie, or whatever you call that guy. Jackie was a white wolf that abandoned his wolf pack because of his white fur and blue eyes. Jackie felt like he was a threat to his wolf pack, left the pack because in his mind he was showing loyalty to his wolf pack because if he leaves, predators won't have it easy to locating his friends. He decided to do it all by himself to live alone. Wolves are animals that thrive and survive by being in wolf packs, hunting together, living together, and protecting each other. This plays into one of the major things of Naruto, bonds, family, 
etc. But Jaggy decided to leave the clan because he viewed himself as a threat, just like Kowak. Similar to Jaggy, Kowaki sealed Naruto, ostracized Boruto from the village, all in an attempt to show loyalty to Naruto's plan of making a safe world for people to thrive and survive in. This is Kowaki's way of showing loyalty and love towards his friends and his newfound friends and family, protecting them by doing it all by himself. The whole episode of 209 played on the parallels of Jaggy and Kowaki as characters, but unfortunately at the end, Jaggy died and Kowaki said something that really hit home. Hima asks him why Jaggy had to die and Kowaki basically explained everything I stated before. His fur made him an outcast and he sacrificed himself so his wolf pack wouldn't be obliterated. This was after Hima asked why didn't they work together. Kowaki ended the answer to her question with he wanted to sacrifice himself and they should respect that. The same thing Kowaki is currently doing in Two Blue Vortex. In chapter 4 on page 26, we're giving another death flag for Kowaki. Kowaki says, do I really have to say this again? I'm an Utsusuki killing Utsusuki. My power only exists to kill other Utsusuki. Once that's done, I'll be happy to off myself. Until then, I will do whatever it takes. Got that. In Kowaki's words, he's basically saying that his life no longer matters as long as he's able to achieve his. Once the Utsusuki are dead, Kowaki will kill himself or just die. He doesn't have a reason to continue living after he completes his goal. It's actually scary when you think about it, but let's move on to death flag number two. In the recent chapter, chapter eight, on page six, Delta tells Kowaki, the moment dear Ida tires of you, I'm going to kill you. Kowaki pauses and says, once I'm done with my goals, I will go away on my own. Again, saying that he's going to end. And what also seals the fate of Kowaki as a character is he's a direct parallel to a fan favorite character that we all know and love. That character's name is Obito. Obito was a character that resented the shinobi world after he saw his childhood crush Rin die right in front of him in his hands. He vowed to destroy the shinobi system to make a safe world so somebody like Rin can exist. This is similar to what Kowaki is doing. He wants to destroy the Utsusuki clan, not the shinobi system, but the clan that is threatening the world to make the world a better place. Place. But at the end of the video, I'm going to pull it all together because you won't understand the Kowaki Obito reference until you understand the next reference with Boruto. So let's move on to my glorious king, Boruto Uzumaki. Just like Kowaki, I'm going to briefly touch on Boruto's character journey. Boruto Uzumaki had a unique character journey throughout his series. It's either you love him or you hate him. Boruto started off as a young kid wanting his father's attention and rejecting the idea of becoming the shinobi. But within his first major arc, Boruto became the literal embodiment of the soul of the shinobi, which was stated by Sasuke Uchiha the greatest of all greats, the king of all kings. Boruto receiving that stamp from Sasuke means everything to me. Earning the soul of the shinobi from his master Sasuke, gaining the karma seal from the fallen Momoshiki, Boruto became the cursed child of his own series. Boruto discovered that Momoshiki will one day take over his body, erasing his soul from existence. Even after hearing these words from Amado, Boruto didn't allow this to stop him. See, out of every character in the Naruto franchise and yes i'm taking it there borto is one character that understands what self-sacrifice is being a selfless character allowing yourself to die for a better future these are things we see throughout the Naruto franchise. For example, when Ino and Shikamaru fathers died assisting the Shinobi Alliance in the fourth great ninja war, Boruto's resolve of sacrificing himself eventually became a household meme in the Boruto fandom. We just found it funny about how Boruto jumps at any opportunity that deals with him dying. This was solidified in chapter 66, page 38, when Kowaki speared Boruto at the Boruto realized moment Shiki has become such a threat and he can no longer contain and control him. Let's move on to the different hints that we've gotten in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. Major death flag for Boruto was in chapter 3, page 38. Kowaki says, why are you here? 
if you come to die at home, I'll help you right here, right now. Boruto answers back, stating, dying in Konoha doesn't sound bad, but not today. Pairing this statement that Boruto made with the new information that we received in chapter 8, we now know that Boruto is able to see into the future, which should have been obvious to the fandom because we know his mind has became more in sync with Momoshiki and Momoshiki was able to peer into the future. This means when Boruto made that statement, not today, and dying in the Leaf Village isn't that bad, Boruto has already seen his death and he knows it's coming. Even when the God Tree clones were introduced and Boruto barely escaped with his life, Cash and Koji told Boruto that they already knew they were going to have to fight and he almost risked the fate of the world if he would have died at that very moment. So now let's get into the character that Boruto is a parallel of. This character is his grandfather, Minato. I've always had this feeling since the beginning of the Boruto Next Generation Part 1 manga series. Both fandom used to joke around how Boruto was so much similar to Minato because he was a child prodigy and a genius and he was able to create his own version of the Rasengan just like his grandfather. In the introduction of Two Blue Vortex, Boruto learned Minato's famous thunder god Jutsu, the Flying Raijin. And with Boruto learning this, it solidified the fact that Boruto is a direct parallel to Minato, meaning Boruto's character is going to end the same way Minato's character ended. That is sacrificing himself for the greater good of the village. Boruto already understands this. Sac Self-sacrifice is a vital concept concept of the soul of the shinobi. Minato also inherited the soul of the shinobi. Minato became the greatest Hokage that the world has ever seen, but when his village was in danger due to the threat of the Nine Tails and Obito Uchito made the decision to sacrifice himself to seal the Nine Tails within his son, eliminating the threat of the Nine Tails. This was probably one of the saddest sacrifices that we've seen in the Naruto franchise because he left his son all alone, carrying the burden of the Nine Tails within him. That's why when Naruto finally met Minato, he punched him dead in the stomach. If you've been paying attention to Boruto Next Generations, you will already understand and accept that Boruto is going to sacrifice himself to save the world. Boruto would not put his life above his friends and his family and the shinobi world. The same goes with Kowak. You remember how I said I'm gonna pull it all together. If Boruto represents Minato and Kowaki represents Obito, Kowaki will also sacrifice himself to save the world. Based on the first episode and first chapter of Boruto, we see that Kowaki goes as far as destroying the Leaf Village. Boruto was the last person to stop. In this fight, or after the fight between Boruto and Kowaki, a situation is going to come up where both the characters are going to have to sacrifice themselves to save the shinobi world. Boruto will die as the nameless shinobi, and Kowaki will die being known as Naruto's true son and the only person that will ever know the truth will be Naruto Uzumaki and her not. All I'm saying we gotta pray for Hima's mental health because she has two brothers that are crash out. He's about to become an only child real soon. Obito died sacrificing himself and saving Naruto in the fight against Kalgia. Minato sacrificed himself to eliminate the threat of the Ninetales. Boruto and Kowaki will die at the end of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex. But that's it for the video let me know what you guys think down in the comments and i'm out